The most terrifying part of the writing process is staring deep into the pale, soulless void of your word processing program and watching the cursor blink at you, waiting, its blank face judging you, mocking your ability to write even a single word, filling you with existential dread. Don't let the dread sink in. You don't need to fear the blank page. Part of what makes writing so hard is knowing how big of a project it is and not knowing how to break it up. Having a process to break up the work into more manageable chunks lessens the dread and makes the writing much easier. Today, let's talk about some of the ways in which composition scholars have divided up the process and how you can use those divisions to improve your workflow. The writing process as we think of it in the Western part of the world was originally explained by Cicero, a Greek politician and rhetorician from the time of Julius Caesar. When composing a speech to be delivered in public, he said that there were five canons or sections to the process, which he called invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery. To Cicero, invention meant finding and developing your material, specifically things like, what's your topic? What do you want to argue? How will you organize it? In the invention phase, the writer worked out the major parts of their argument, their evidence and reasoning, and their goals. Arrangement meant organizing and structuring your material. This was where you decided on a format and an order for your points and how you would argue them. Style was the art and ornamentation you used when communicating your message. This is where you focused on the actual words you would use to make your speech both artful and memorable. Since people didn't give speeches with written notes back then, they memorized them instead. So for Cicero, memorizing your speech was the next step. In modern terms, we think of this more as preparing for the argument. And finally, delivery was the actual technique of speaking and interacting with your audience. Since the delivery was live, you had to consider your technique, inflection, vocal control, and performance. Since we tend to write a lot more than give speeches in the modern period, scholars eventually adapted Cicero's canons to fit the needs of the written word. The revised version divides the process into pre-writing, drafting, revision, editing, and publishing. Pre-writing is everything you do before you start the actual writing. This includes picking your topic and a research question, doing research, getting your preliminary thesis figured out, brainstorming, and outlining. Then you move to drafting, which is your first attempt to write your entire argument beginning to end with all of the necessary parts. I like to call this my sandpaper draft because it's usually pretty rough. The revising process is where you start to reshape the essay on the big picture level, changing or revising points, rearranging paragraphs, adding or removing entire ideas, or revamping your intro and conclusion. Publishers usually call this the revision stage. Once all the right bits are in the right place, then you can do all the fine detail sentence level editing. This can include word choice, topic sentences, grammar, and proofreading. The version produced at this stage is usually called a proof. And the last stage is putting your writing out into the public venue that you have chosen. Okay, so this is pretty ideal. It's actually not unusual to cycle back a step or two as you revise your draft, as you realize a better shape, a kind of evidence or direction for your thesis statement. But at the end of the day, you'll follow all these from beginning to end. So what good does it do you to know all these steps anyhow? And how does it prevent that terror that comes with looking at a blank page? The answer is workflow. Everybody needs a plan for how to get their work done easily, accurately, and without a lot of frustration, and a good workflow can do that for you. Simply put, keep the steps separate in this workflow and you'll get a much faster and better result. Don't throw a wrench into the gears of the writing process by doing multiple things at the same time. For instance, if you try to start writing while you're still researching and outlining, drafting is going to take a lot longer because you'll keep changing your mind on what you want to say and how to say it. It also tends to stunt your writing process, your research, and confuse the structure. If you revise and draft at the same time, you're choking off ideas before you can get them down on the page. This often causes writer's block. It's also extremely slow, and you tend to lose good ideas that you second guess early on, but then end up being useful later. If you try to do big picture and fine detail revision at the same time by mixing revising and editing, you also get into trouble. 
Sentence level changes tend to win out, leaving a clean surface, but leaving problems with the structure of the argument. If you need to go back to a previous step, that's fine. Just put down your work until that step is done, and then come back. Let's say that you get a paper assigned to you on the first of the month, and it's due on the 29th. How should you divide up your time? I highly recommend that you don't do what I used to do, which was wait till a week before the essay was due to start panicking. Then I'd lock myself in the library doing research all weekend, bang out a draft in a couple of days trying to edit as I went, hopefully proofread the morning I turn it in, and then call it done. Do you want writer's block? Because I can attest, this is how you get writer's block. It's also how you get half-baked ideas, awkward papers and unsatisfying results, not to mention ulcers. If I needed to go back to pre-writing something in my paper, I wouldn't have time. I'd have to stick with whatever I came up with on the first shot. Writer's block can come from a lot of factors, but one of them is the amount of pressure to complete a project. More pressure makes it harder to write. Lower stakes make it easier to get things done on the page. Think about it. When you sit down to start a new paper, which looks more terrifying? Having to write for 30 minutes a day or having to write for five hours? because that's the difference between starting a month early and starting three days before. So take a leisurely stroll through the writing process instead. Spread out the work and break it into smaller, digestible chunks and do it just a little bit every day. For the first couple of days, mull over some topics and narrow down to one that you think you'll like. From about the fourth to the 10th of the month, take short periods of time to find your research, read through it, take notes and the like. Plan out an outline the weekend of the 10th, and then start drafting the next day while it's fresh in your head. Pick one little part to write every day, an introduction, or a couple of points, or counterarguments. Make them short, leisurely jogs, not a marathon run. You only need to get this done a paragraph at a time. Let it sit for a few days and think about how to overhaul the essay the week before it's due. Don't put this off because revising often means going back to do more research and redrafting some bits. You need that extra time available. From there, the weekend before, do all your fine tuning editing, proofread it the day before you turn it in, and then you're done. Today's dirty little writing secret is to not jam your gears. Remember that your brain cannot create and edit language at the same time. So if you keep your drafting and editing stages separate, you can keep your ideas flowing and that can help you prevent writer's block. Okay, that's all for today. I'll catch you in the next video.